So this video is for if you're having difficulty with printing my 100% 3D printed tourbillon model. And the biggest issue that I foresee people having is with the tight tolerances. So what I'm going to be covering is uh, mostly how to calibrate your e-step and your flow rate, but I will very quickly go over um, like the recommended print settings for the parts, as well as at the end I will talk about some other common issues that might pop up and how you might address those. So I'm going to try and do this in less than 30 seconds. The recommended print settings for the tourbillon consist as two main sets. The escapement itself has to be printed at point one with six wall lines. Outer frame of the tourbillon can be printed with a normal amount of wall lines and you can get away with a 0.3 layer height. None of these parts require like any infill so you can put that sucker all the way down to zero. None of these parts require large amounts of support material, but when you import the files, some of them end up upside down. Okay, I think that's it. And come to think of it, I don't know if I hit record. Um, I hit record. Now I'm gonna cover calibrating your E-step and your flow rate. The E-step is basically how many ticks forward that your extruder motor has to take to equal 100 meters of filament. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is actually unload the filament from the print nozzle and then you're going to want to undo your Bowden tube right here. Now if your printer doesn't have a Bowden tube you can just do the normal through the extruder method it works just fine you'll just want to measure out a hundred millimeters and then 110 and you'll just be measuring the difference between those points so if it doesn't make it past the first point you're under extruding past it you measure that distance you're like oh I'm over extruding by four Hopefully that makes sense. Now you will need to have your print head preheated, even if you are doing the into open air method, um, just because otherwise your 3D printer won't let you actually extrude any filament. Alrighty, so once you have the filament out of the actual print head, you're gonna wanna go ahead and just take a wrench and very gently unscrew it. Now you can see that I ha still have some filament sticking out, so you're going to want to clip that flush to the end of the print head. What this will allow you to do is once you tell the printer to extrude what it thinks is 100 millimeters, you can cut it flush again and then take your measurement off of that. So at this point, you're going to want to go into your go into your printer, go to prepare, move, extruder, and then tell it to extrude 100, meter, 100 millimeters of filament. But once about 100 millimeters of filament has been extruded, you're gonna to wanna to cut it flush again and then measure it. Now, because you can see it has quite a bit of curve in there, so I actually, so I actually like to clamp it into, my, into a little vise just to help, just to get rid of that curve and make it a bit easier to measure. Now, now what I got was 97.15 millimeters, I believe. And so that meant that I was under extruding ever so slightly. So you might want to run this test two or three times just to get kind of an average. But once you do know how much filament your printer is actually extruding, now it's time for the subject that you either hate and fear or love and have a weird superiority complex about. Math. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the amount of filament that you wanted to extrude, 100, Divide it by the amount of filament you actually got. In my case, it was 97.15. So then you're going to want to multiply that by your current E-step. Now, if you've never calibrated your E-step before, it's by default should be set to 93. And that new number that you get, in my case, it was 95.7, is what you're going, is your new E-step. Now, I'm showing you how to do this on an Ender 3 V2. So the exact file locations might be a little bit different on yours, but it should still be it should still be relatively the same. So you're going to want to go to control motion transmission ratio transmission ratio E. So in my so on my 3D printer it is called a transmission ratio, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change that number from the 93 to whatever new number you got. Then you're going to want to click back twice and click save configuration. For an Ender 3 V2, you need to make sure that you have an SD card in the slot. Otherwise, that uh, 
Otherwise, that setting will be lost. And so the reason why I like this, the op into open air method versus better than the through the extruder method is because when you set the e-step this way, you know for a fact that that is the e-step for that machine. And then you can just change your flow rate depending on whatever filament you're using. Now to check your flow rate, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to print out a little square like this, which is just a little square whose walls are 0.8 millimeters thick. Now this exact uh, square I actually printed before I calibrated my E-step because I know that on my machines after I calibrate my E-step with uh, just standard PLA I don't need to change my flow rate. So this is just so that I could have some numbers to work with in the math. But, but essentially after you print it you're going to take some calipers and get an average measurement of the wall thicknesses. On mine, I averaged 0.75. Once you actually have those measurements of how thick your walls actually are, the equation to figure out your flow rate is actually very similar to the E-step. You're going to take your desired wall thickness, for this model it was 0.8, divide it by the thickness that you actually got, 0.75 in my case, and then multiply it by 100. And that new number would be the would be your flow rate. So you just want to slap that into your slicing software, reprint this, and double check to make sure that it's printing properly. And in case I didn't mention it, because I kind of, because I am kind of rushing through uh, how to calibrate your e-step and flow rate and all that, I will be putting links to a video that goes into a lot more detail about it in the description. Now, if you are still having issues printing your tourbillon after uh, you calibrate your e-step and your flow rate, I'm going to go through some of the common issues with uh, printing that I think you might end up having to fight. Now, if you're having blotting on the corners, excessive stringing, or your tolerances are still being too tight, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to either turn your print speed down considerably or adjust your flow rate so you're under extruding slightly. With these small parts, because the print head is changing direction so often, it will build up pressure within the nozzle and it won't have time to get rid of that pressure before it moves on. What that results in is little blob little blobs on the tips of like the uh, the escape wheel and it can cause over extrusion and things in places where you don't want it. Now, if you have already leveled your bed as best as you can get it and you're still experiencing elephant's foot, I would recommend try recommend printing all the parts with a raft. You could try turning the knobs on your print bed back by like a quarter of a turn, assuming you still get good bed adhesion. Or in Cura, if you go into the advanced settings option, there is a way to turn down the print speed, um, temperature, flow rate, all those sorts of things on the top, on the bottom layers. As, and that can really help you if, you're, if your printer just has horrible bed adhesion and you need to have it kind of just crushed down. You can turn the flow rate down on the first few layers so it would be under extruding and then you just want to change those back after you sliced it. If you're experiencing warping on uh, like the frame pieces or on like the teeth of any of the gears then I would recommend just a crap ton of glue stick. So warp but warping is generally caused by the filament contracting af after it's been laid down. So to combat that you can actually print it slower and there is settings in Cura to do that within the advanced settings option. Or once the printer is running, go to print speed and change that down to half and just let it run until it has a first few layers and then switch it back to full speed. That can help. If you have a heated build plate, you can turn that up, the temperature on that up just a little bit higher than you normally would if all else fails. Um, another issue that I can see people having is support material getting stuck within the parts. Now that's generally caused by elephant's foot, or I've had it once or twice where having a wall line around the support material can kind of cause it to fuse together. So you're going to want to make sure that your support material doesn't have any wall lines on it. Now those are a lot of the printing issues that I can see someone having when, it, when, they're, when trying to make one of these. If you're, if you're having issues that I didn't address or none of my suggestions helped you, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll try and get back to you and give you a little bit more personalized advice. But keep in mind that even with 
a perfect printer, these parts will still require some fitting after being printed. Now, whether you're just looking for like a quick video on how to actually assemble it or a video that covers the complete assembly and troubleshooting process, I have you covered. I'll link both, I'll link videos to my quick assembly tutorial and the complete assembly and troubleshoot down in the description as well as well as links to a video where I teach you how to use this escapement in your own, in clocks of your own design. But I hope that that, but I hope that this has helped you and given you some ideas on how to have a little bit more success with printing these. And, and thank you for watching.